<clears throat> and hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. I'm going to do a video today answering a question from one of our followers on the site asking me a question about uh, doing a video on defending tempo offenses. So I'm just going to give you a little bit on, on uh, what we do, how we defend tempo offenses, and then uh, a little bit about how you can maybe work to uh, fit it into your scheme of how you're going to defend tempo offenses. Make sure you check out some of our sponsors, GameStrat. In the uh, description box below in the video, there's going to be a link that takes you directly to the GameStrat website. If you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, make sure you check out GameStrat. They're also customer-friendly, great guys, respond to you immediately, so check out GameStrat. Defensive Coordinator 1, an in-game app letting you make critical adjustments based on the actual live in-game data. You've got a template set up with a team, tendencies, formations, plays, things built in. They actually start running what they're running on game night against what you're calling on game night. Take those two things, put them together, and make the critical adjustments you need to make based on the things that are actually happening in the game. Just Play Football, digital software, bringing your program to the next level. The only uh, play drawing diagram tool that I use. All right, so if I have to uh, speak at any clinics or do any webinars where I need anything drawn up, Just Play Football is going to be the one for me. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. We have one in our weight room. Get thousands of reps working on striking, elbows in, thumbs up, how to strike, how to be violent with your strike uh, without needing a partner. You don't need anybody holding a bag. You don't need anybody holding a med ball. So Difference USA is uh, a way for you to get thousands of reps striking in the offseason. No partner needed, just player. All right, Difference USA striking machine hooked up to one of your squat racks in your weight room, and you're good to go. All right, um, Max One, which is an app that lets a head coach or any coach streamline organization, communication, scheduling, workouts all under one platform. So you can set it up to where all your players are in there on the app. You can message them if there's a change in practice. You can message them if there's a change in the game. Message them about a banquet or something that's coming up that you need to get word out. Um, have their workouts on there if somebody's going out of town. You can have... Uh, you can have them go into the app, see the workouts that they need to do. They have leaderboards where you can chart the progress that your kids are making and make it competitive. All right, so communication, scheduling, workouts, messaging, all in uh, all under one platform. So check out Max One. All right, and then our hat sponsor, Dome Hats. All right, every coach has a story. Every hat has a story. Dome Hats wants to tell, it wants to help coaches tell their story. Custom online hat builder, uh, hats, beanies, visors. Get on there, build your own hat, uh, change the colors of the different panels, change the stitching, change the top buttons, change the eyelets, put your logo, your custom logo on the front of the hat, put words on the side, words on the back. Uh, great company, awesome custom uh, hats that are incredible. We absolutely love them, so make sure you check out Dome Hats. All right, so when I talk about defending tempo offenses, okay, the first thing that, that I look at is do you have a base system that has check with me answers? So our base uh, our base system of how we play defense and our coverages are kind of built or based upon a check with me system where we play our coverages based on the deployment of the receivers. Types of receivers, whether it's tight end flanker, uh, two open receivers, three open receivers, and then, you know, obviously the deployment of the receivers to one side. Is it two by one, two by two, three by one, possibly three by two, or any other funky set you might see? So our base system of coverage is built that way to begin with. So we have a kind of check with me system that our three safeties have to be able to um, understand how to put us in the right coverages based on the deployments of the receivers and then also the types of, of receivers that are out there. Attached tight ends, open wide out. So that's how we start with our base system anyway. So we feel like we're always ready to defend um, and, and up-tempo type team. So if we got a formation that was a two-by-one formation, and what I mean is you've got two receivers here, by one receiver over here, all right? And on this side, it happens to be a tight end and a flanker, all right? And on this side, it just happens to be an open wide receiver there. All right, our system is set up so that we will play a quarter space defense on the tight end flanker side, and then we will play one of our open side cut calls, which will basically end up being an eighth man down in the box. For argument's sake, I'll draw the easiest one up, which is sky coverage, safety down, corner back off the half. Okay, so to the single receiver side, we have it built in with the different cut calls or away side calls that we want to make, all right, so that we can play sky with the safety down, cloud with the corner down, hard with the corner pressing and the safety over the top, hawk, which is more of a quarters or an extra type deal where we play man there and the safety 
is extra in the run game and it can help us as an extra defender in the passing game. So within our system, we have it built how we want to handle a single side receiver. And then if it's another tight end, we get down to maybe only one or two answers that we can play as opposed to uh, the four or five things we could play to an open receiver. So we're already built to handle that, all right? If we, if we got a, a two-by-two two set, all right, so if they came out and all of a sudden they were a two-by-two two set, so let's just say, all right, they had two open here and two open back here, okay, our system is already built in that to two open. We're going to play our two read coverage, which is a part of our course kind of toolbox. All right, so now we're going to play two read, all right, on this side, and then we're going to play our two read coverage. So our RAM would bump a little bit on this side. So now you've got, all right, two open here on this side, and you've got two open on this side. So now we know how we play two open. We play it to both sides if it's in part of our base defense. So we're playing two read or palms, whatever you want to call it, to both sides if we were to get two open. All right, so we're already ready to handle that. And then if we were to get three by one, all right, and for argument's sake right now, just for the, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to draw it up as open stuff. If we were to get three by one, we now know within our base defense, all right, our coverage check for three by one, within our base is what we call mix, all right, but it's essentially, um, it's, it's an X out theory to where we're playing man on number one, all right, and then we play two read on number two and three, all right, so this is what we would call three by one, so they've got three open here, all right, and they've got one open back here, all right, so it's a three by one set, so we're built in ready to play what we call our mix coverage, okay, uh, man on number one, two read between these two safeties and this linebacker playing two read coverage on these two and the back. And then on the back side, again, for argument's sake, we don't need the safety in this coverage to help us to the trips, so we can leave two for one on the back side. And just for the drawing or the sake of the drawing, we'll go with a sky coverage on the back side with the safety down and then the corner off the hat. So how we play our base coverages, and, and it's basically um, – you know, it's kind of the Gary Patterson style of defense at TCU when he was, you know, implemented his 4-2-5-3 safety stuff. Our coverage is based on the deployment of receivers and then the types of receivers that they are to each side. Are they open? Are they tight end flanker? Are they closed? So we base our coverages off of what the offense is doing. So we feel comfortable as long as we practice it within our base system that we can line up to up-tempo teams and we really shouldn't have any issues because our safeties are making calls on every play anyways. We don't play a lot of set cover three or set cover two or, you know, a, a predetermined coverage that we play to every formation. Our coverages are based on the formations that we're seeing, so we feel pretty comfortable with or defending up-tempo teams. All right, so second thing I would look at is playing some type of field boundary or left-right defense. We play a left-right defense. So our guys, other than our free safety, our free safety is the only guy that travels. So our other ten players on the field will be left and right players predominantly all right, with the exception of some game plan stuff. Or last year we had a Division One defensive end, so we move him at times a little bit. But when we go into camp, we play a left and right defense. So our guys, except for the free safety, the other ten guys never move. All right. So for us, I feel like that's a that's an added bonus. You know, you're gonna you're gonna obviously you're you can build in what the weaknesses of playing a defense like that are. When I'm talking about defending a tempo offense, I feel like the way we teach our kids to play defense lends itself right into a tempo offense because we're not chasing the formation all over the place with guys. Free safety is the only guy that's moving. And then from there, our safety, our left and right safety, all right, in our three hybrid safety system, our left and right safety have to be able to play down when they're on the free safety side and back when, they're away from, when, when they are away from the free safety. So we feel comfortable when we get um, tempo teams that we're not running guys all over the place. If you play a field and boundary type defense, then you could set your front field of boundary, you could set your coverage field of boundary, and then have your, you know, your coverage checks if they, if they go, excuse me, formation into the boundary or formation into the sideline. You can have your set coverage checks. Okay, so you feel like you're not moving guys all around. So, you know, you could have the front check to the back if you want to. That's not too hard. But as long as that's part of your base system, something that you don't have to scramble to communicate to your players. All right, I think it's a lot easier when you're defending tempo teams. To me, field boundary or left or right, we happen to be left or right. That's just my preference with how I like to teach the kids that I have in my program. All right? 
be good on first down. All right, here's why I say that. If you're really good on first down and you get them behind the sticks, it may change how they approach the tempo of their offense. Okay, so you have some teams within their tempo offense that second and 15 and second and five, they play at the same pace. Okay, but then you have some other teams who really like to keep the pace moving when they are on schedule, but if they get behind schedule, they slow down a little bit or they maybe they go into a scan mode because now on second and 15, they need a call that they feel can get halfway. Maybe they have to throw the ball, whatever they're trying to do, so they may slow down a little bit. So if you're good on first down, I think there's a chance, now I can't, guarantee it to you, but there's a chance if you're good on first down that you can get the other team maybe to slow down a little bit. So I want to be good on first down when playing tempo offense. Have a system that's easy to communicate, whether it be your hand signals, your verbiage, whatever you're doing, try to have things that don't take a long time to communicate to people. Okay, try to have things. Now, obviously, if we're playing a tempo team and we feel like they're really cranking it up, we'll stay base defense for a little bit, and if we're playing good, we're fine. But if we have to get a call in, we have to have something that we can call relatively quickly and communicate that to all 11 players on the field. So we have all 11 guys look over, and then our free safety will echo a call, all right, depending on how young or how experienced we are. If we feel like we have guys that can't see the sideline or have a habit of not looking to the sideline, because that's something you've got to teach your players now. A lot of you guys on defense, when they get to you in high school, aren't going to be used to looking to the sideline for a call. So you've got to work and practice on teaching your kids how to look after every play, where's the ball, look, get the call, all right, let's play the call. But when you do that, when you're playing an up-tempo team, if they're going to snap the ball every 15 seconds, you better have a system of communication that makes it real simple and concise to tell your kids what they need to know if you had to change a call. Now, if you're just playing your base defense and letting it rip against whatever they're doing, then you don't have to make a call, you're fine. But at some point, you're going to want to probably make a call and when you need to make that call, you have to have a manner of communication that is consistent, easy, precise, and limited in nature so that you're not making 55 hand signals to somebody when the other team's ready to snap the ball. All right, so your communication, I think, when defending an up-tempo offense, communication is important. Have simple pressures, whether they be field pressures, boundary pressures, mid pressures, whatever they are, zone pressures that, that you feel safe to every formation, all right, whatever they are, have something simple that if you, if you start to get the ball moved on you a little bit and they're ripping the tempo, you can get a pressure in really quick that your kids can play. So don't, you know, try to maybe avoid a system that might have checks to it. So a blitz that might be a blitz to formation possibly or something like that. Not saying you can't do it, but if that other team is ripping really fast and your kids have to check the blitz based on the back or the formation and, and you don't get a chance to get that call in or you're in between your kids communicating, all right, you might get yourself beat when you're not lined up. So a simple blitz that's either right or left. For us, it's a right or left or a middle deal because we have left-right players. You could be, a, if you're a field boundary defense, it's a field pressure, a boundary pressure. Something simple that you can, if they're moving the ball and you need a change up, you can get it signaled really quick and your kids can line up and play it really quick. So think about having a simple pressure or even a simple movement, whether it's a D-line stun or something that can change up your base defense but your kids can execute well, rather simply, they can execute it every time, all right? Not saying that that's going to make it effective, but you know your kids can execute the call in that small window uh, time frame that you have against an up-tempo team, and you feel good about them getting the call, executing the call, all right, and hoping you execute better than the offense. They still might out-execute you, but you feel good that you've got a pressure that's in, that your kids know how to play, they can execute in a real short amount of time, all right? So think about simple pressures. Practice it, all right? Favorite drill that I like to practice tempo. You set up two scout groups and you set them up on opposite ends of the field, maybe 30 yards apart, all right? And you got to be careful about what plays you're trying to run. This is a drill where you're trying to get lined up and defend base plays. Don't run things where the other team's going to throw the ball, all right, uh, 30 yards or 40 yards down the field because what you're going to do is you're going to set up, all right, you're going to set up a scout offense over here and you're going to set up a scout offense over here. All right, and what you're going to do is you're going to have your defense line up. All right, so you're going to have your defense lined up, all right, facing that scout group. All right, so your defense is going to line up facing that scout group, and that scout group's going to run a play. All right, they're going to run a play, and your defense is going to play that play, and then your defense is going to turn around, and you're going to make them sprint down here to another scout group waiting for them, 
and they're going to face, obviously, line up to that scout group there, and that scout group's going to run a play, and they're going to defend it, and then your defense is going to turn around, and they're going to run back down here, okay, and they're going to line up, and they're going to defend that. So what I would do is I would probably start off and say, all right, look, let's make it real simple, all right, early in camp, let's make the first one, all right, a pro set that's two by one, and then when they come down here, all right, let's make it some type of, all right, two by two open set. When they come back down here, let's make them defend the three by one set. When they come down here, maybe we'll look at three by two empty. So this way we got four different alignments. We've got four different offensive formations. So our kids are defending four different formations in four reps. So we're going to defend one here. We're going to sprint down and we're going to defend a different formation and a different play over here. Okay, then we are going to sprint back after that rep and we're going to line up over here to something different and we're going to defend a different play and a different formation over there. What it also is really good for, especially early in camp, conditioning. Make your guys sprint to get lined up. Get those scout groups ready. Work your coaches. Have two different coaches working scout team. It gives you a chance to teach your coaches how to run scout plays and how to command the scout huddle because you need two coaches doing it. So you got more coaches involved. Teaches your defensive coaches how to get their eyes to one thing and then jog over or look over. Even if your defensive coach is standing in the middle, i got to look here, see the formation. Are we lined up right? See the play, coach it up. While they're sprinting, don't stop the drill. While they're sprinting the other way, you need to be coaching your players and making some critiques and, and some changes or some coaching points that you want to make while your players are there. So it teaches coaches how to coach and make adjustments on the fly. So that's a drill that I really like. But you got to understand, if you're going to face tempo teams that you want to defend, you better practice it. All right, don't ask your kids to go on the field and do something that you've never worked on all right, or never practiced and then wonder why they're having trouble with it. All right, if you have to defend tempo teams and that's part of what you need to do, practice it. Put it in your practice plan. That's an effective little drill. There's other drills and, and, you know, that, that are good and other guys that probably do it better than we do. That's a simple little effective drill that we run to get our kids uh, lined up the formations to get them able to play tempo football and then also to get a little conditioning in and make them play when they're tired. All right, so I hope this answers the question. Um, I don't exactly remember which subscriber uh, or follower um, asked the question, but uh, I like answering questions from subscribers whenever I get a chance. So hopefully that, that helps. Hopefully it helps you defend tempo teams. Uh, if you have a way of defending tempo and you're successful with it, keep doing it. Whatever works for you, all right, is what's best for you. So keep doing what you're doing. As always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for following. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell, click the bell so the notifications are on. Every time we do a video, it goes right out to you with the notifications. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, comment. I respond just like this. If you comment, I try to answer every comment that I can answer or do a video on things if you ask a question and I have time to do it. So please, thumbs up, thumbs down, comment. All right. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll see you guys next time.